The dying words of Lord Hellman stun Ellawood beyond belief. Darren the Marquess of Laos knows all. Despite the pain it brings, Ellawood takes his newfound knowledge to heart and sets for Laos once again. On the way to Laos, he travels through a Kaelin village. Ellawood and his party decide to rest there for the night. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Episode 7. This time we're going to be going to our first side quest of Ellawood's story, the Peddler Merlinus. Which is actually very important to go to early. So you want to get this in case you are not coming directly from the last episode. In the level where you get Guy, you just have to visit the village in the top left corner to be able to access this. Backstory we all know about. Alright. Rat face guy again. He will never die. And some random swordsman. Puzan. All right, so naturally the heroes are going to step in and save the day. There we are. So, your goal for this chapter, unlike previous chapters... Oh. Unlike previous chapters, your only goal for this one is to protect Merlinus for seven turns, not unlike the chapter with, what was her name, Natalie? Maybe? Back in Lindis' story. So, as you did just get Hector fairly recently, this is a good level to train him up, but he's not going to be able to attack twice versus a great many enemies. You do have some bandits that are going to be coming through here once they destroy this snag, so on turn two, you're going to want Guy over there to get him some experience for this level. Meanwhile, you have Dorcas and you have... Bartre, who are pretty much functionally worthless, but it's okay, because you can just have Marcus rescue Merlinus and move to a completely unrelated part of the map, following which you're pretty much safe. You don't really have to worry about that too much. The only part that you have to do with this now is focus on getting experience for you and your units. In this case, we're going to keep training up Ellawood because having a properly trained lord is going to be very important. Already level 9, no strength, that's a pity, but what are you going to do? Now, I am going to have to stick Lowen out by that bridge for one turn, I think. Just to make sure Rebecca doesn't die. He could attack and he would actually get the kill, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But you can end this mission early if you kill the boss of the level. Reinforcements will keep coming until about turn 6, so this makes the whole affair fairly difficult, but it's definitely not impossible, so... Take that for what you will. Now, we have Hector and Oswin. Oswin doesn't need as much training, but Hector needs as much experience as he can get. To which end, I'll have him waiting over here by these bandits. There are also going to be some enemies coming in from the south. And possibly even knocking over that snag across the river, or that might just be something for us to use. Yep, they are definitely going to knock that down. So I'm going to go ahead and stick Matthew on that bridge for his dodge chance. The mercenary is a 1% chance to crit, because Lowen is not particularly lucky, but that's fine. He can easily survive the hit. They're going to take down the snag on the right. And now we have a little bit more to worry about there. Oh dear, we do have to get over to that village. I'd forgotten about that. Shoot. Okay, so in that case... Let's see here. Lowen needs to get out of the way. Matthew, I think, can kill this unit. Just barely good. Just barely is good enough in this case. Attacking twice is always 
extremely to your benefit. The fact that thieves can attack twice so often due to their naturally high speed is actually quite handy. Did he really only have six skill up to this point? Oh god, I did not even realize I'd been getting level ups that bad. Uh, what can Marcus use for items? He can use axes. I don't like to do this, but I think I'm going to try to give him an axe just so we can get through this level faster. I do not want the enemies to uh, get to that village up top. Luckily for us, Marcus, having rescued someone, has his speed and skill cut in half, which means that he can't usually kill enemies because he'll only be attacking once. So we can get Rebecca some easy experience or anyone else that's in the area. Level up, good. Skill and speed, not a terrible level up, but HP and strength would have been more beneficial. Now, what can Ella would do here? Even with an iron sword, he's going to finish both of these units off on their turn. So long as I attack the Myrmidon. Then we cannot forget about these two units over to the right. So I'm going to put Guy over here with an iron sword on the woods. Hopefully they will focus on me instead of that village up north, but I can't guarantee it. Yeah, it looks like they are going to hit that, but hopefully they'll go to attack guy. If not, we might have some trouble with this level. Because the village at the top right does just give you gold, but it's a sizable chunk of gold, and you never really have any lack of use for it. Alright, some decent experience for Guy. Oh, another enemy, good. Now I can have Guy finish one of them off, Hector can finish off the other, plenty of experience for the both of them. They're well on their way to becoming good units. Marcus gets hit, but that's okay, he's tanky enough to take it. And he doesn't attack twice, even better. The enemies have not yet busted down Oh, did more enemies just spawn at that fort? I think they might have. But that's okay, we can deal with some more enemies spawning, it just means extra experience for us, and that our units aren't going to be able to take the southeast path around to get to that village. We're going to have to go the way Marcus is going. HP, strength, and luck, not terrible, but in Hector's case, skill and speed I would have preferred, so... It's always what you don't want that you end up getting. Now, we're on turn three. Good, good. Plenty of time to get to the boss. The boss is up here in the top left corner, so it can be fairly simple to get to him if you can have someone knock down the tree right by, right by where Elwood is now. Because after you cut down that tree, you can just move up north and take out the boss. The only problem is enemies are going to be continually spawning there, which is rather an issue. Um, who is a vulnerary? Apparently Matt, not Matthew. And he's going to need one, so he can take the one from Bartre. There we go. Oh, shoot. That may have not been my brightest move. Oh, well, the only thing that can attack him are that Nomad and the guy with the Iron Sword, so... He should be alright. In fact, if anything, they'll probably attack Marcus. There we go, though. Knock down the snag, so next turn Marcus can go grab the prize from the village. How's Sarah doing on experience? She's actually doing alright. She can heal Loen. I've been forgetting to heal with her on a regular basis, which you really need to if you ever want to get a cleric up to a decent level. And while clerics do start off fairly terrible, admittedly, they can get better once they reclass. Oh good, those bandits are destroying that snag for us. It makes things a lot easier. Guy is really close to being able to kill these units in one turn, but not quite there yet. He'll get there eventually, and that's when he'll start being one of our most useful units, but for now he's just in training stage. Matthew, proving that giving him that energy ring was a good idea. 
Alright, so the snag is down, and I cannot remember if this boss moves, so that's actually going to be interesting. Well, if Elwood's about to get hit by the boss, then we'll know whether or not that's true. I don't think the boss moves, but... Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So good times there. I'm going to keep Elwood equipped with a rapier, simply because it's going to help him kill both those bandits this turn. There we go, got 5,000 gold, always welcome. How much damage could Rebecca do? She could actually kill this bandit, good, do so. She did take some damage in the process, but she's not within range of any enemies at the moment. One of the things that I don't like about Fire Emblem 7, because which is Fire Emblem 1 in the United States, is the fact that enemies do spawn at the beginning of their turn, not at the end of their turn. While this doesn't sound like a very big thing, it gets a little bit more of a problem when you realize that this means that you cannot accurately gauge how many enemies there are on each given turn within range of any sorts of respawn points, like forts or even the sides of the map for that matter in some later levels. So it's really a bit of a crapshoot as to whether or not you're going to be able to defend yourself on these sorts of turns, but this is sort of alleviated if you have a guide or if you have any sort of means by which to know. Previous knowledge of the game would work just as well. And I did have the strategy guide in years past, but I've since lost it, so our Let's Play remains... Holy- oh! He does move. That's interesting. Alright, so Matthew is going to take some serious damage from Puzon here, but he's going to be able to attack twice, which means if I can heal him, he should be able to take out the boss on his own. And Sarah is within range, and we've killed pretty much every other enemy, so there's not much else to do here. Elowood's gonna land a crit, which is excellent, one less use on his rapier that he has to waste. But it is for a worthy cause, getting some experience is always a valuable asset. There we are. Two bandits dead, Elowood's fine. Level up, level 10 I think now? He's halfway there? Stre HP, strength, and skill, that's a good level up, I'm okay with that. And we have a lot of units up there, so I'm going to heal up Matthew. And then Sarah needs to be careful because that nomad is almost within range. Elowood might actually be able to kill the Myrmidon on his own, though. Uh, very nearly. If he crits, certainly he would be able to, but no crit, that's alright. Enemy hits with an 81% chance, which is high enough that it's practically to be expected. Can Rebecca take out the boss? No, but she can make Matthews hit a one-hit kill, which is always a good idea. If you can take the opportunity to have a unit kill without being counterattacked, always do so, because it's to your benefit. I'm actually going to see if Hector can hit with a hand axe here really quickly. There we go, now Guy doesn't have to waste any of his killing edge uses to be able to get the kill there. He can just use his iron sword, and even that is going to be a one-hit kill. Wonderful. I could have switched it around and had Hector get the kill, but honestly, I like Guy more as a unit than I like Hector, which a lot of people use Hector's mainstays in their army, but Guy is determined to prove me wrong with a terrible level up of just one HP. Here we go. Just kill Puzon. And I think that should just about do it. Matthew gets a free level up, which is always nice. HP, skill, and defense. Very good level. Things he needed all. And then we do still have to go through the rest of the turns. Excellent. So we get the XP regardless of the fact that we killed the boss. Now, Marcus has Merlinus, so that's really not going to be our concern here. Our only concern is going to be that Sarah might die where she is right now. Simply if the ranger gets two attacks. I don't think that's going to be the case. She's a moderate enough level that she should be alright on speed. Plus, NPC units have just terrible speed in general. Yeah, she's going to take a single hit for 10 damage and that's alright. We can survive that. And with this music, 
it's all very triumphant because we pretty much killed all of the enemies. In fact, I think this is the only enemy left. And if we route them, it should end the level, unless that's not a condition either. It's just letting the turns go through. HP luck in defense, another good level. Strength would be welcome. You're getting to level 11, you only have 8 strength, but you're a thief, so, you know, a little bit to be expected. End turn. Straight to player phase again, no enemies exist. Alright, so those last two turns were a breeze. Ratface is going to get away. Again. And Merlinus is going to be okay with his weird little split stash thing and the massive Widow's Peak. Alright, so he's fine and then we're all gonna head out, but he's like, no, let me hang out with you all. Oh, the Merlin is theme, or shopkeeper thing, or whatever it is. Yeah, that's, that's a fairly good point. A lot of people do seem to want you dead wherever you go. Plan to travel to Lycia, that's probably not the best idea at the moment. Alright, and this is the supply for this game. So long as Merlinus exists, you're going to be able to send items to and keep them in the supply, which is a fairly useful thing. We no longer have to stick our extra items on bar tray and just wait for our other items to break. There we are. Now, Merlinus is a bit of a weird supply in that he's actually a unit. In other games, the supplies are just unseen thing. Oh. <laughs> a droll merchant named Merlinus now joins Elowit's group. With Merlinus in tow, they set out for Laos the following day. Laos is located in the heart of Lycia, a territory ruled by the Power Hungry. Power Hungry. Power Hungry Marquess of Laos, Lord Darren. Preparations for the war, of which the Ferean Magistrate spoke. The disappearance of Elowood's father, Elbert. The death of Marquess Santarus. Do these all revolve around Lord Darren? In Elowood's heart, the need for truth is drowned in fear. A fear of what the truth may hold. So as I was saying, Merlin is a bit of a weird unit in that he's actually a unit. He's going to be a tent on the map. Quite serious. A tent on the map. Uh, we get Darren talking to his son, who gets a little bit of a well done son guy treatment from his dad and the, he's just looking for approval. Oh hey, it's it's Ephidel again. Oh there you go. We just have to stop them here, good. Yeah, no, I can definitely see your plan working there. There we are. So Merlin is just going to be a tent on the map. For every battle that he survives, he levels up once and gets additional stats. Once he hits level 20, at the beginning of the next level, he will automatically class up, no need for a master seal, into a traveling merchant, which is going to turn his tent into a horse-drawn caravan. Now, there are nowhere near 40 chapters in this- actually, there are pretty much near 40 chapters. There are not 40 chapters after you receive Merlinus, so it's never possible to max him out on levels, but being able to turn him into the traveling merchant, the convoy instead of the merchant, is fairly useful. In later games, they would change this to using the convoy as simply a function of standing next to or being the main lord of one's party, but for now, it's it's an alright solution. It's certainly better than having to manage your items without the Hmm. Huh, without the merchant at all. God, that would be terrible. I'm just thinking of that. An entire game being unable to use the merchant. Alright. A knight has ridden forth from the castle. It's Marquesis Laus's son, Eric. We will see him, 
but be wary, my lord. He appears to have a red coloring, which means he's an enemy unit. <laughs> Literally a Hector behind him. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Okay, so that turned from pleasantries to insults pretty quickly. Oh, and Hector's just there. Apparently he was hiding behind a nearby... I have no idea. They're standing in the middle of a field. What? Where was he hiding? How could you miss the giant guy in blue armor? Alright, and this chapter is one in which we are going to meet an old friend. Not this person, naturally, but an old friend nonetheless. This is also a bit of a weird feature that this Fire Emblem had that others, to my knowledge, did not. <laughs> we have a random old woman who runs out. Hannah, a fortune teller. Now, she does occasionally give decent advice, such as, you need to bring this unit to be able to recruit further units, but most of the time her advice is going to be something that something to the effect of, if there are axes, you should bring swords. I am a tactical genius. She's a fortune teller. She can tell who should take what weapons. But she also, I believe, charges for her services, so you're wasting gold, essentially. There we go. So trade and fortune are... All right, now, for fortune, you can actually look at your rank. I don't know what these ranks are based on. Funds are actually based on, I know this one, current items you have in storage as well as the amount of gold that they would sell for. So having more items is actually more beneficial to your funds, I think? Don't quote me on that. Anyway, EXP, Combat, and Survival are all 5 stars, because we've been getting plenty of that, but Tactics are a 1. Why? Because I keep having people attack people that they're weak against. However, this doesn't matter for me, since I'm having them kill the units anyway. So, take that for what you will. Now we can also just look at the information about us. For this, we're 1 star, which I think means we're just a little bit into the level. We're not actually going to be taking everyone with us, we're going to be leaving a couple of folks completely behind. But that's more just because I want them out of the way, and they can be in the way if I just leave them there. Now, who needs a vulnerary? Oswin needs a vulnerary. Take one of Lowen's. He has two for some reason. Do I have any extra more powerful swords? I have a steel sword on Matthew, but I think that's probably more important than Guy at the moment. Depends on pow how powerful is he. I think I'm actually going to give Guy the Steel Sword here. It only has 12 uses on it, but that should be enough. Matthew also only has one Vulnerary use left, but I don't know that we have another. So, I'm gonna have Marcus give his Torch and his Mine and the Heal Staff and an Iron Axe to Merlinus. Who else can use these items? Looks like pretty much no- oh, Rebecca has an extra Vulnerary, that's helpful. Give that one to Matthew. She's only got 10 uses on her iron bow left, though, so I think I need to give her that from Oswin. I forgot I bought that a couple of levels ago. Now, let's just go ahead and check the map. Alright, priorities in this level. You're going to want to get to this village post-haste, and then you're going to want to get to this village with the unit that you get from the top left village. It'll make more sense once we do it. For this level, you can arrange your formation so Hector is ready to fight the units in back. You also want someone, most likely Oswin, ready to guard this. You need to be careful as there will be bandits spawning over here and they can actually move across water. Same thing for thieves but to a much lesser degree. Ocean gives a lot of dodge, or not a lot actually, it only gives 10, doesn't it? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pretty much make a beeline for here, send some units, your most powerful, into the middle of the map so they can draw out the enemy fire, and then just have your units come around this side of the map and then move straight down to here. Now, you do need to get to the boss and kill him as your victory condition, if I'm not mistaken. 
I actually don't know. Oh, there we are. R for info. Oh, no, that's just info about that. Never mind. Oh, defeat enemy. So we have to route them. But the easiest way to get up to this part of the map is going to be to simply send Marcus. He can draw enemy fire fairly well, and he won't be able to die from it. And since he doesn't have any weapons on him, he won't be killing any enemy units. We can send Elwood along behind him but we can't change Elwood's position because he's our main lord. Then we have Matthew, Sarah, Guy. I actually think I'm going to be sending Guy around south with Oswin because the bandits with the axes are going to be a bit of a problem for Oswin, but no problem at all for Guy. Meanwhile, the lance users are going to be a problem for Guy, but not one for Oswin, so they make a perfect team. Sarah's going to be along, going along to keep them healed, and Matthew will go wherever he's needed so he can stay in the middle there. I'm actually going to move him over here just in case I need his help killing these knights to the east. Lowen can follow Marcus if need be, but once we actually get the unit in this town, we're not need going to need to worry about a lot of things since they are powerful enough to take quite a few enemies on. And now, without further ado, I think we're going to go ahead and start the fight. Now, you do have the choice whether you want to deploy Merlin is on each level, but you pretty much always want to deploy him. There's no downside to it. If you deploy, it will require a guard. That is a lie, and a bold-faced lie at that. There really aren't going to be that many reinforcements. There are going to be some, I think, so I'm going to keep Oswin back by the tent after he helps with these first couple of units. One level for every battle it survives. If it dies, you don't lose it permanently. It just disappears to the next level. And the tent will be harder to kill as it levels up, naturally. Now, sounds like he wants to take point, and Urk is hiding in the left town. We need to get over there and get him as quickly as possible. I do have to send Elwood up top, though, don't I? Shoot, I forgot about that. It's alright, though. Normally, you have to worry about Urk surviving, but he's a level 9 mage with thunder and a goddess icon. I'm not really too worried about how well he's going to live through this, because I'm pretty much confident that he's going to live through without any sort of issue. Now, Loan is actually powerful enough, even if he's at a disadvantage for weapons, to take out this unit on his own. And I can have Marcus rescue Urk if he can get in range of him, so I can just drop him next turn and have Elwood talk to him immediately. Otherwise, there's the chance that he will move and attack, things like that. And how far can Elwood move? Five? One, two, three, four, five. So if Urk doesn't move, then we're fine, but for now, I think I am going to rescue him, move backward one space, and just wait there. Rebecca can wait behind Elwood to provide support, and now it's time to kill these knights behind us. Hector's Wolf Bale does ludicrous damage to anyone on a horse or in armor, so... It's going to be our main leveling tactic for him for the first couple of levels here, until he can get some more speed at the very least. Guy cannot kill this unit with an iron sword. Steel sword is too heavy for him to use twice. I'm going to have to bust out the killing edge, but he makes the best of it and decides to use a crit, which kills him in one hit. Now, we can send Matthew, Sarah, and Oswin down south. I don't think any of these units can attack at range. No, so we're fine just equipping a regular item on Oswin. Like an Iron Lance? Where can they attack now? Well, I could stick Matthew here, actually. Because although the unit, both of those units are within range of Matthew, if one of them doesn't kill him, we'll just be able to have Matthew block off that path, essentially, for the next unit. Or if he does kill the both of them, then he gets plenty of experience and he wins anyway. There's really no downside to having him fight this. Because as you can see, now the one space that leads to the bridge is blocked off, so Matthew, while he can't get out until he kills that unit, also can't be attacked by the other unit, so they're forced to attack Oswin, who won't take any damage. I don't know if he's going to attack twice, though. Doesn't look like it. So this next turn is going to be spent just killing units. We get that single unit with an Iron Lance, which sucks. He's going to hit Lowen, who's not going to be able to do much damage at all. Apparently that guy is fast, but that's okay. Elowitz there was his rapier, so he should be fine. Now, in the south town, you do see Priscilla, who is the only other unit that we're going to be getting on this map. Now, Urk, they mention her escort and that he left in search of a way out of here, and you just heard Urk talking about a passage out of here. So, once Urk gets to that town, he can recruit Priscilla, and Priscilla is actually a fairly useful unit. She's a troubadour, which means she's a healer on a horse. 
Oh, there you go. These guys are fair enough. And they decide that they don't really want to go to war, they don't like what the Marquess is doing, but none of them really have any say over it. The only person that has any say over it is, well, Marquez Laos. I'm going to go ahead and leave Hector here by the main part of the base, since I think some knights are going to appear later. Sarah is going to heal Matthew, who's going to take out this last knight. Osmond will take out the other. Or Cavalier, not knight. Osmond's going to take out the other Cavalier. Matthew's going to be able to take out this one. Sarah might get hit by the Archer, but that would be the only thing she'd be hit by, and I don't think they're fast enough to attack twice, so we should be fine. The only part I'm slightly worried about is low in survival up in the top corner, or the middle of the map there on the top. But he should be fine, since worst case scenario- really? Well, I suppose the archer can't attack, and that's a plus. So I'm going to have Marcus come back here, wait here so he can immediately be a meat shield, and just wait in place. Elwood is going to... Wait, what? What do you mean Elwood can't talk to Urk? Who has to talk to Urk? Is it Matthew? Sa I'm not a clever man. Alright, so we're going to be recruiting Urk next turn. But for now, Elwood's going to be able to kill this unit without too many issues, and Loen is out of danger, so we should be alright there. I need to make sure that Rebecca is not within anyone's attack range. Apart from this archer, that would be fine. And as she is not, I think we should be okay. That knight is going to- oh, she's in range of the first knight. Which means she also might be in range of the archer, which means she might die, hopefully not. But it's always a possibility. And worst case scenario, we can always have Marcus fall back and defend, but I want to be able to push forward into the enemy units. Since I do want to actually recruit Priscilla, and doing so without first, making my way through all these cavaliers is going to be fairly difficult. He is going to attack Sarah, though, since healers always take priority in the AI's mind, which is good, because I think if he attacked Rebecca, he might have gotten a kill. There we are. And it's not actually a bandit, it's a pirate. Now, they do actually let you know that he's there, which is quite nice of them. Them being the developers, I suppose. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drop Urk... How far can Sarah move? I'm going to drop Urk on this forest here, and then move Loen down so he can help out. I'm going to talk to Urk with Sarah, who is actually the one who can recruit him, not your primary lord. Now, El the reason er that Urk joins us is not because Sarah asked, and not because anything else is happening, but because he simply wants to protect his charge, in this case Priscilla, who, if I'm not mistaken, was also the person he was supposed to be protecting in the first place, but that's... Uh, I'm not entirely certain of that, so don't quote me on it. Now, Rebecca's going to get a level up, which is good, I just have to make sure she's out of range of any sorts of units that might be able to do her harm. HP, speed, and defense is actually a fairly good upgrade. So I could actually move Marcus one space back. But instead, I think I'm going to move Urk a couple of spaces forward. Now, as always, Urk remains an amazing unit, and now that he's gotten a Thunder Tome, he's even better. With the 30 HP we got him from the Seraph Robe, as well as all of the damage that he's dealing, he is going to clean up this level pretty much single-handedly. He didn't even really need our help to get back to the South Village. And HP, skill, and speed, pretty good. Weapon level increased on Anima Magic, which is even better. Now, to be able to kill this guy, though, we're going to need Oswin to use his Iron Lance and then Matthew to attack afterwards. Oswin should still level up from this, since he was so close. So, I think that that should actually work out to both our benefit. HP, skill, luck, and defense, no speed, but that's fine. He doesn't need to move quickly if he's never actually getting hit for any damage. So Matthew's going to be able to finish off this archer, hopefully getting him enough- No, he's nowhere near enough XP to level up, never mind. But we do have to move quickly at this point, since that enemy in the south is going to be able to take out that town if we're not careful. 
Now I am going to equip Guy with an Iron Sword since I don't really want him to kill anyone at this point. And I'm going to move Marcus back a space and not move Elowood at all since we do have a bunch of units coming in. Now this is going to be a dangerous turn for Elowood, if anyone, simply because he's... Okay, no, never mind, I forgot about target priority going after Marcus first, which is good. If all the enemies ganged up on Elowood, they might have actually been able to... Well, they would attack him, he would promptly kill them because he had the rapier, and then the next one would be able to move and attack regardless. Now, Guy isn't doing much damage at all because these guys have both the weapon triangle bonus and the fact that they're cavaliers and he's a low-level Myrmidon, and that's rather an issue, but it's going to be less of an issue later in the game when he's taking a lot less damage, but for now, he's missing with 89% chances to hit, so... I don't know, maybe his seed as my favorite... The signs point to rain. You've got to be kidding me. Of all things, rain makes a comeback? I honestly didn't remember that. Shoot. Alright. So we've got to get to the bottom of the map, and quickly, because this rain is going to be stopping our progress. Guy is at extremely low health, and Sarah is not within range to heal him, so it's going to have to be Matthew. Because I think if these pirates can attack a unit, they'll take priority over attacking to attack that unit over attacking the village. If I'm wrong, I might have to restart this level, which would suck. But what are you going to do? So Oswin is going to be able to nearly take out this cavalier, actually. Simply Simply? Or rather definitely put him in at low enough HP that if Guy can actually land a hit, both hits that is. He'll be fine to take him out. I'm going to have to have Guy use a Vulnerary, though, because I don't like him being at that low of HP. Elowood is going to be fine even with an Iron Sword, because soldiers are ludicrously weak in defense, as odd as that may be. And Rebecca is going to stay protected, unless she's actually able to defeat this Cavalier this turn. If she can, I might even not need to. 96% chance to hit for 8 damage twice. Alright, so she's not going to take out this Cavalier. Now I need to see if she is within range of dying. She is, so I'm actually going to rescue her and wait there. Now, he calls for reinforcements, which would be a serious issue if the general here, the general of the army, was not a complete coward and abandoned his son without any sort of regard for how much he needs his help. Well, there you are. Give me one more chance and they just leave. Together. Oh, there you go. So no reinforcements whatsoever. And I think Eric might actually start moving at this point. Now, this last unit is going to attack Elwood, which is fine because Elwood's fast enough and powerful enough to attack twice without dying. And I think that this Cavalier should die to Guy now. One more is going to attack Urk. He'll die to Urk. Then I can move south with Matthew, Guy, and Oswin. Get to that village with Urk and hopefully rescue Priscilla in time. Or at the very least before the enemy units reach it and destroy it. There we are. So the pirate will attack any unit that's in range. For this, Matthew is more than fine to do so. Because while the pirates are fairly powerful, they aren't a very high accuracy class. Additionally, Matthew is extremely high dodge as a thief, so... It's really just not even a fight. Urk takes 10 damage, but that's only a third of his health, and he gets a crit with it since Thunder has a 5% additional crit chance on it. That gives him about a... 1 out of 10 to crit on every single attack that he has, and now it's going to be raining, which is a complete pain. Oh, and I completely forgot to visit this village, which actually does have something despite Urk coming from it, so I'm going to send Marcus over there pretty quickly here. But the rain is naturally going to be fairly irritating. I'm going to have Matthew stand on this sand to get a little bit of dodge chance. The enemy will get the same, but that's fine. It's more important than Matthew dodges than they do. And now, I think we can send Elwood just south a bit. He's got a fair amount of health, but I'm going to go ahead and use a Vulnerary on him. Make sure he survives, because we're going to have a lot of cavalry coming in on this next couple of turns. 
Matthew crits with a 3% chance too, which is good, uh, even just... I mean, he wouldn't have needed to crit, but that's one less use wasted on his Iron Sword. Skill, Luck, Defense, and Resistance is a great level up, but it's still devoid of Strength, because Strength Growth on Thieves is low as is. Hmm. Oh well. What's up? I have to go to the store. Get stuff from Mom. She's downstairs with her phone. She will text you if she needs something because she can't talk. Right. I'll go ahead and get my... Oh, it's sitting right on the floor. I'm sure it's charged. Yeah, it is. I was charging it all night. Alright, a uh, bit of a slowdown there. Now, the rain means that it's still going to be fairly difficult for us to get through this area, but with Matthew able to move forward at as speedy a pace as he is, it should be alright. This knight does have 9 defense, which kind of sucks. But Matthew has 13 attack, so he'll be able to do some damage to him, just not very much. Oswin is going to move out here, but he can't really move too far. Guy is going to follow, but really, we're just stuck in this rain, which is why I hate rain in this game. It's just such a pointless mechanic. There is no need to have a mechanic which specifically stops you from doing anything but moving quickly. Granted, it stops the enemies from doing the exact same thing, except for pirates, if I'm not mistaken. They don't have any disadvantage from rain because, I don't know, because they're pirates. Now, it's going to go ahead and last for three turns, which just absolutely sucks, and that's what I had to defend against. I was wondering what it was. These pirates are going to make a beeline for Merlinus after you rescue this town, so you have to have... You have to have... You have to have someone who can defend against them. Now, I don't absolutely need anything from this shop. I'm going to pick up a Fire Tome. Just because that'll help Urk. I don't want him using Thunder all the time, since it has a much lower hit rate. But since Urk's nowhere in range right now, he can't really get over there to do that. Now, Matthew is just going to be able to get an extra 10 dodge from the, being on this vendor, though, which is going to help him out against this unit. He doesn't actually do anything. And he had, would have done 4 damage, but he's at a disadvantage in the weapon triangle, so he does not 1 less damage and it has 10% less hit. So really, the only thing standing on the village is doing is compensating for the fact that, well, that he was weak in the first place. So one of these pirates is going to be moving out to try to kill the village, the other one is going to be moving out to try to kill Merlinus. N and what we have to worry about at this point is trying to defend Merlinus. Now this is actually going to be a great experience for Guy though, since as these are pirates they will have plenty of hit chance and a fair amount of dodge chance, but their disadvantage is, disadvantage is in the fact that they're weak against sword units, and sword units are naturally high in evasion, and axe units are naturally low in hit chance. So the pirates aren't actually going to be able to do that much. We do have to move Marcus onto this town though to prevent the bandits from killing it. Now let's see what else this guy can give us. It's a large sword, a bit unwieldy. It might be a blade. Blade weapons are... yep. Blade weapons are much heavier, but they have lower skill requirements. This one has 12 weight, but it has more power than a steel blade, or a steel sword, rather. I'm going to go ahead and trade for that fire tome, and attack with it, since Urk just deals tons of damage, because although he may have 9 defense, he has 0 resistance, which is really what we need to worry about in this case. Matthew could go up and fight these knights, as that is going to be a hell of a fight, but I actually think this is going to be an experience for Oswin more than anything else. I'm going to get him up there, move him onto one of these forests next turn, and just watch all of the enemies throw themselves at him. It's going to be pretty amusing. Now, Rebecca will stay nearby, but not too nearby, since she is going to need all the help she can get, and Matthew will remain over here to confront any pirates that are coming in from the sea. Oh god, Marcus has a sword now. <laughs> The Iron Blade that he got, he automatically equips, so he's going to kill any units that come his way, simply because he's a, well, a paladin. He's the beginning unit that you can use as a crutch character. 
There we go. So now with this, I can move Oswin onto this square and he'll be able to use his Iron Lance to pretty easily take out this Cavalier. In fact, I think I'm going to move Elwood out of there and Rebecca out of there and just let Oswin handle the entire situation. With the enemies attacking him, he's going to get a little bit of a bonus. And, well, once he has the enemies attacking him, he can attack them back and then he can use the kill on his turn to get the EXP. Since he's not fast enough to attack twice, but what are you going to do about that? Oh, and while we're on the subject of... I actually just thought of this. This wasn't brought up by any particular subject. I've been playing Fire Emblem Ascension quite a bit for the past couple of days, and I gotta say, it's a really solid game. It's just very fun. One mechanic that I'm... I was a little bit dubious of at first, but I'm really liking now that I'm getting into the game more, is the pairing system, where you pair a unit with another unit and they get stat bonuses. You can use this to create just two units that, if you switch them after one is taking damage, can act like a single siege unit, just kind of holding off a single point, rather than having to move people around and switch them on a single point. Now, of course, there is the disadvantage to this in that you can't heal the unit that's helping the other one, that's paired up with the other one, and you can't really do too much else with it. A single speed level up? Urk, you're disappointing me, buddy. Is this bandit... Uh, he's not within range of the town, is he? No, that's next turn. Good. So Urk will be able to kill this guy before he hits the town. Albeit only with 10 HP, so that's a bit risky, but... That'll happen. I'm going to go ahead and... Move Oswin out here, since he's just going to remain... Our number one source of ass kicking. Because once Oswin... But... Regarding Fire Emblem Ascension and how I got on this from Oswin... What you can do is you can pair a low speed unit, like, say, a knight, with a high speed unit, like a thief, and this will give the thief extra strength and speed, extra strength and defense when he needs it, and this will give the knight extra speed when he needs it. Or you can just double down and have a knight paired with something like the, um, the little helper class you get. It's a, it's called a villager at first. You can grow it up 30 levels and then class change it into something else that is a level 1 tier 1 unit, which is absolutely ludicrous. But you can pair it up with him for just a ton of defense. Now, Eric does have a silver lance, which means he's going to be one of the few things that can actually deal damage to Oswin, but he's not fast enough to attack twice, and Oswin isn't weak enough that he can be attacked and killed easily. Now, he's going to hit with a 34% chance, which is terrible for us, simply because the guy actually took damage, not because it messes up our strategy or anything of that sort. And looking at the terrain around here, what I think I want to do is I want to move Oswin onto this woods. He could have just moved onto one of these, but the forests there are surrounded by other forests. If he had a unit on the other forest, they would get the bonuses that he was getting anyway which would naturally be unfortunate. Now, Urk is going to be able to take out this bandit just in time to get to this village. Once he goes in and talks to the people in there, that will recruit Priscilla, which is good. Since I do actually plan on training her up soon enough, a magic wielding horse unit is... You, it's There's literally only one you get in the entire game, so it's worth training her up. Plus, I always just found Troubadour a cool class. Now, we are going to heal Joshua up for no other reason- or Joshua Guy. Joshua's the name of the Myrmidon in Sacred Stones, I think. But with an Iron Sword, he's going to be more than able to take out this final pirate. And we're actually nearly done with the level now, with those enemies taken care of. We've got three units left, one of- or four units left, one of which is the boss. And Oswin is going to be able to kill the boss next turn if all goes well. But one thing that I'm going to know is I'm not going to have Oswin attack on his turn. I'm going to have Oswin let the boss attack. Because if Oswin attacks and he misses and the boss hits, then Oswin would be at a severe disadvantage because he would be at 6 health. And if the boss hit again on their turn, Oswin would die and I'd need to start the level over. It's not a likely scenario, but you kind of learn to anticipate unlikely scenarios with Fire Emblem after a while. Because it's not so much a rule of what can go wrong will, so much as just 
you should take precaution against things going wrong. Because they can happen. So, we learn that Priscilla is searching for her family, and Urk was in... Priscilla was entrusted to Urk by his teacher, who's not been named, so... Eh, that'll work. So now we have Priscilla, who starts with a men's staff, so I'm going to have her immediately go by a heel staff instead. We are back down to 10,000 gold. We've just made it through all of that gold in such a short time. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to equip Oswin with a Javelin. It gives him a slightly lower hit chance against the sun there, but he is going to be able to counterattack this archer, which might let him kill it on this turn. Uh, Eric can actually attack Matthew, but I don't think he can kill him, can he? 22 attack. Oh, and I get that Silver Lance after he dies? That's actually quite excellent. 15 damage to Urk. He would survive, albeit barely. I don't know, 16 damage to Urk. I just have to make sure he's out of the range of the archer if I was going to have him fight this guy. I am actually going to stick Urk here. There's the off chance that he's going to be attacked, so... If he does get attacked, or... Was I just calling Matthew Urk? Oh god. I'm getting my units all sorts of confused. Oh well. So, the archer is going to attack, completely pointless since Oswin can't take damage from him. He's going to die to the javelin, which is good. Oswin gets another level up, hopefully some strength and defense. Even better, HP and luck in addition to those. Good stats all. And he's going to go attack Priscilla! I wasn't anticipating this. Um... Solve. Alright, and we're back. That never happened. So, as you might have just seen, uh, or not have seen, because that didn't actually ever happen now, Priscilla just died. Um, I completely failed to notice where she was at in regards to the boss, and she took the silver lance to the face, and that was it, she died. So I restarted the entire level, but I did things a little bit differently. Instead of sending Oscar out, or Oswin? Oswin, not Oscar. Instead of sending Oswin out into the middle of the map, I sent Hector, because I realized he has just about as much defense, albeit he has zero resistance and four luck. God, that's terrible. But with his wolf bail, he was able to clean up all the cavalry pretty well, at which point I realized that they were actually giving you a bit of a hint as to the game's strategy with the game's storyline. Before the level, you heard the son, Eric, here, saying, I, you know, I've always hated Hector, blah, 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 blah. And at first that seems like, oh, okay, they had a bit of a rivalry, rivalry, and I didn't actually mean to visit that house, but whatever. They have a bit of a rivalry, then you actually realize that he's wielding a lance and is on cavalry. Hector uses axes and has an item that deals extra damage against cavalry, so they're just telling you, basically, use Hector against this boss. Come on, it's not that difficult. So, once I figured that out, I actually just sent Hector out against the cavalry, and they just vanished underneath the wolf bale. Seriously, everything was getting one-shot, and I completely forgot Sarah was standing there next to a pirate, but it's okay, because she survived. So that makes it alright. Is Guy in range? No, Guy's not even in range now, my bad. So, Rebecca can almost deal enough damage to kill him, can low and weaken him a bit? Just enough, perfect. So, Lowen will deal 10 damage, Rebecca will deal the remaining 11, and I'll be at the bottom. The boss, the pirate, will die. Matthew, meanwhile, already took care of his pirate a turn and a half ago. But now with this setup, we should be able to beat the level pretty easily. I just need to move Hector within range of the boss with the wolf bale, and we'll be able to tear this level apart. Or what's left of it, that is. Rebecca gets HP and defense, that's great. Strength, skill, and speed would be also good, but... My basic rule is, so long as your stat is below your level, or your stat is above your level, your level is below your stat, you're alright. Uh, things like defense and resistance, that doesn't really work out as much, but if it's your primary stat, things like skill, speed, strength, things that you use to attack, you want to max them out, and if your level is higher than that stat, there's no chance to max it out by the time you hit level 20. Which is why I'm usually a bit disappointed by one stat level ups, things like that. Because one stat is advancing a bit towards being 20 when you level up, but the others are just getting left in the dust. Which... 
For Hector, this is actually going pretty well, except for the fact that his speed and his luck are fairly row ro fairly low, and the fact that he has literally zero resistance. Just absolutely nothing. So, with Hector's massive defense, he can actually tank both of these guys pretty much without issue. So I'll just send him onto a forest there. There we go. You've always been nice, sort of me, no matter how hard I tried. You two counted the, all the attention, all the praise. Damn. And then he gets abandoned by his dad. <laughs> Maybe if you'd paid attention to your actual skill, you might have done better. That's actually some pretty sound advice from the dude with the blue hair. Oh, weapon level increase. That's pretty good. Now, this guy can't do any damage despite the fact that he's wielding a sword because Hector's defense is just so high. Oh, one point away from hitting his next level. That's fine. Can I actually finish him off with Elwood? I could. Hmm. That is actually quite tempting. Let's go ahead and do that. Elwood tries to appear to his better nature, but Elwood obviously isn't going to do too much. Whatever. He's at three health, so all of his boasts are pretty much nothing. He did use one use of that Silver Lance. Which kind of sucks, because we do get the Silver Lance and whatever uses he hasn't put through it. HP and skill, strength and speed are officially below his level, so they're not going to max out, which sucks, but what are you going to do? That will happen occasionally. One enemy left, and it's this Laos soldier, and that is it. Hector finishes him off with a well-timed Wolfbale attack. And gets another level up, hopefully some speed. No, just defense and strength and skill. So that's fine, he won't be attacking twice, but he'll be hitting for enough that he probably won't have to. Now, <laughs> Eric's a little bit, uh, taken aback that his father would, uh, just leave him behind. But yeah, Ephidel, there you go. He's behind everything. They're playing some good cop, bad cop. Hector's the bad cop, that's alright. Oh, there you go. So Foray had agreed to this, but apparently he was a bit too noble for it. So he disappeared and he's probably dead, and there you go. So Eric were apparently just going to leave, which is fine, I guess. Well, we'll just have to go and have to find his dad, find out the truth, because chances are he's a good guy, he did, had some underlying motive, there you go. And that's the end of the chapter, so we are going to save, and I think that's going to be the end of the episode. Next time on Let's Play Fire Emblem, on to chapter 15, The Noble Lady of Kaelin. See you all then.